Hey, Hervin here. This is part two of our retirement income case study. Today, we'll consider the impact of downsizing for a single individual. Just as a reminder, our case study is Aerith. She is 60 years old, asking about retiring right away and sorting out whether it's even really possible. Last week, we talked about the CPP planning and the differences we can see by taking it at 60, 65, and 70. Watch that here before carrying on with this video. The link is in the description below. Please go ahead and watch that first because this video will build on what we did last week. Before I continue, I just want to ask you, please leave us a like, give feedback in the comment section. It really does help. And because this case study will continue, be sure to subscribe as we make further improvements and hit that notification bell so you get it right away and see the changes in Aerith's plan. Now, we found out last week that there is definitely room for improvement around when you take CPP. We will now build this case under the assumption that we will take it at 70 for Aerith. So we'll have a 70 take up for the rest of our case study installments, unless there's a specific request to do otherwise. I've also addressed a concern regarding that plan. Plan, it's not really a plan yet. Having a significant estate for her with no clear indication on who to gift it to. There's really only three beneficiaries to an estate. Number one, it's family. Number two, philanthropy, so charity. Number three is the CRA or the government. I tend to pick the first two every single time. You may be different. Of course, if she was a real client, I'd be sure to ask about her giving and legacy goals. What does she want to do beyond her retirement, beyond her life? What kind of impact does she want to leave behind? In this case, we have no indication for any of that. You might be asking why I think this is so important. Here's how I see things, okay? Every dollar unspent in your retirement is a sacrifice on your lifestyle. For Aerith, almost all of her estate at 90 will come from the primary residence, her paid off home. So without proper planning and just blindly trying to leave this paid off home to nobody, Aerith will be forced to spend less than what she otherwise would have been able to for her retirement. If her sustainable income was enough for her and there's some left over for the estate, then it's definitely worth having that conversation. So let's look at some revised assumptions. Right now, her home is mortgage free. Let's say after sales, transaction costs, so real estate commissions, legal fees, and so on, Aerith can still clear $500,000. That's possible in Calgary right now for single detached homes. She can then immediately purchase a $300,000 home as a replacement. So maybe she goes into a town home. Now, depending on your city, this may not be possible, but there have been a lot of Torontonians and Vancouverites moving to Calgary because of this, essentially selling high in their city and relocating to Calgary where there's a lower cost of living and they can much easily afford a home for a lower price. Certainly there are pros and cons to this. Interprovincial tax changes needs to be considered and your situation will certainly vary. But let's go back to our case study. Her net sales proceed is $200,000, which she then has to distribute. She invested into her TFSA, her RSP, and a non-registered account. We assume that she only had $15,000 of RSP room, $6,500 in TFSA contribution, and the rest went into her spending and the non-registered account. Her new sustainable retirement income is $46,122. This is inflation adjusted after tax throughout her whole retirement until she's 90 years old. This is an improvement of $7,568 after tax, after inflation. I have to really emphasize that. That's up from $38,554 from our best case last week. Her total income last week, her lifetime spend 
was $1,195,174. However, if she downsizes, that increases to $1,429,782. So in nominal dollars over her whole retirement, that will allow her to spend $234,608 more. That's a lot. But what are the trade-offs? I've said it before. Retirement decisions are all about understanding the cost of what you're opting to do today. So what's the trade-off for this extra income? Her final estate will certainly be lower at $568,683 versus $952,973 last week. Now, this is when I pull up a giant disclaimer. Remember what I said before, none of this stuff is designed to be advice to you or anybody in particular. I did not optimize her drawdown in any way, in any way. We're not making any changes to whether she withdraws from her RSP first or TFSA first. We haven't even adjusted her OAS yet. I can still make changes to improve the estate. The other thing that you want to remember is I gave her very little RSP and TFSA room depending on your situation. Downsizing would allow you to have funds that you can shuffle into your TFSA, your RSP, and maybe other accounts that are available within the family. It all depends on where you're going to allocate your dollars after you downsize. The proceeds being redirected into a TFSA, for example, will have a significant impact on your retirement income and your overall estate values. However, that's not the point right now. I'm just getting you, the viewer, to understand that if you know how much you want to leave behind as a gift, as a legacy, as help to the next generation, you are free to spend more of your assets in retirement. I would present this to a client and simply ask them if the trade-offs are worth it. Is it worth it to them? For you, the dollars and cents will certainly change, but this is a choice. This is within your control. I want you to look at retirement and understand that there's many levers and many things that you can pull that are within your control so that you can design it to give the most to you. I hope that was helpful. See you next week. We'll make changes to the OAS as well as levels of her income throughout retirement. Let's see what it looks like if she spent more upfront, a little bit less in the middle of retirement and taper off towards the end. If this was helpful, I appreciate you. Leave us a like. I really would love to hear somebody in the comment section. I've gotten emails, I've gotten private messages, even on my personal Facebook account, which I appreciate, but please leave the conversation here on YouTube. Have a great day. See you next week. Bye. Oh, did I ask them to subscribe? Please subscribe. Here's our video from last week and other useful content right on the screen.